Hey guys, it's Ross. We're gonna talk about early ripening varieties today. Um, really my favorite, and I think what many would consider the best varieties that ripen early. And it's such an important topic that I think is constantly overlooked. Uh, you need to have your figs ripen early. And for the large majority of us, it's extremely important because you know, if you have about 210 or less frost-free days, it's probably one of the most important characteristics that a fig has that you grow. I mean, it's just so, so important. You're gonna struggle, unfortunately, with getting your figs to ripen in time. And I always get this question at the end of the season, Ross, my fig always puts out fruits. Every single year, it puts out fruits, but every single year, the frost comes in before I have a chance to have them ripen. And I always look at them and think, well, you know, there's a number of techniques that we, we talk about here on the channel. Things like pinching, and we talk about thinning, and we talk a lot about getting our fruits to ripen early, but we talk more about this than anything, is actually getting um, the right genetics. Having the right genetics, the right variety, is so, so important. So if you don't have the right genetics, you're just never going to ripen your figs earlier than you want. Every variety has their own particular set of genetics that regulates this, right? There's early varieties, there's mid-season varieties, there's late varieties. And for me, I think it is stupidly important. You know, we talk about this on the channel. Every year we're reminded of this in the fall. When the fall weather comes in, when the rain comes in, you know, for me, it's not just enough about getting them to ripen period, but it's about getting them to ripen at an early enough date that is the height of my season, which is the driest, the warmest time of your season. If you can get your figs to ripen then, the figs taste the best then. And you're gonna be so happy. You're not gonna believe what you're eating. Um, and it's gonna be like you're growing them, let's say in Southern California. You know, maybe you're in Southern California and this video probably isn't for you, but for most of us out there, we want earlier ripening figs. People in Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, um, you know, people in the middle of the country, the Northeast, even people, you know, a little bit further south. You may even want earlier ripening figs, let's say in Florida, to avoid the monsoon season. You know, there's so many different reasons um, that this could be for you. And, you know, it's not just me that's been really uh, advocating this, it's even people in the Mediterranean. You know, it's not just people who, who live in Pennsylvania and really shouldn't be growing figs, but people like Paolo Bologna, who has been growing figs for a very long time and grows them, um, you know, 700 different varieties he preserves. And he's probably the fig expert of all the fig experts, just to give him some credibility. Uh, in Italy. He really knows his stuff. He knows the Italian varieties. He's got 700 varieties. He preserves them. He trials them. Um, and he has made it his mission. He said it publicly. Um, you can look at his Facebook page. He's on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. He's made it one of his missions, his goals, to find earlier ripening varieties that can grow all throughout Europe. So it's really important, I think, uh, not just for, for me, but for a lot of you guys. And I can go into that for an extreme amount of detail. This fig here is one that uh, is probably the standard because when we think about what are, what is an early variety, right? First, I think we should define it. Well, for me, I like to define it by when they ripen. Um, if you can get them to ripen in a container by the first or second week, of August, uh, you're looking at an early variety. Probably between August 15th and September 1st is probably a variety that's more mid-season. Um, a variety that ripens after September 1st, you're looking at something that is probably on the late side. So anything that ripens in the you know very early August, and it's going to depend on where you guys live. You know, do you live in a place that? Uh, is a bit warmer than me, maybe those dates can be adjusted. But that's when I like to 
really make and define this as right or wrong. So what you could also do is just take a variety here like this guy, like Ron de Bordeaux, and you could say, all right, well, Ron de Bordeaux is of a very, very early, it is a very, very early ripening variety. So any variety that ripens around the same time as this could be classified in the same way as a very, very early variety. So this is really the standard among the earliest figs that you can grow. Um, it is uh, really highly regarded, widely regarded by many fig growers, mostly in the United States, also in Europe. People love this fig, and I certainly agree. I think it's really one of the best um, in terms of its earliness. I've had even years, and I know other growers have had years, where this thing can even put out two crops of fruit. You know, you could have fruit that ripens in August. Um, you could pinch it, get the fruit to ripen in August. It continues growth. In fact, that's exactly what my tree has done. Resumes growth, and then it puts out another crop of figs that then will ripen sometime in October. As you can see, that's exactly what has happened here. This is the second crop if I can get one of these to ripen, that'd be pretty, pretty darn special. Um, you know, and you can also define, I guess, these varieties by a different, different way. You know, how many days does it take for it to ripen after pinching or after fruit set? You know, and, and Ron de Bordeaux is going to take probably somewhere anywhere between 65 and 75 days after you pinch it or after they have set. And um, that's pretty amazing. And that's a really low number. Most, the average is probably around 90. So if you can get your, your fruits to ripen about 70-ish days um, before August 1st, you're gonna have success with this one. This tree also, for me, wasn't protected. Didn't get any head start. We covered it with a tarp. Um, I cut it back to almost nothing. It's huge. It really spread out really well, which I really like about this particular fig. Because it has spread out so much, it has better sunlight penetration into the canopy. It's also reasonably hardy, probably about to five degrees Fahrenheit. Um, one of the more hardy varieties that exists. Also one of the earliest varieties that exists. Um, can't say enough about it, but it does have some drawbacks. There is some negatives to this fig, which is sort of where I'm at right now. Um, evaluating the figs that are this early, you know, um, there's got to be something better, right? There's got to be something better because this variety, believe it or not, is not, um, it's not, you know, indestructible. There are figs I grow here that basically do not split. They rarely crack. Most of those dry on the tree. And I consistently get a higher fruit quality on those fruits and I can sell them too. Ron de Bordeaux splits. In fact, 80% of my fruits this year off of this tree have split. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of a shame. And it's not just me. There's other people who will tell you the same thing with mature Ron de Bordeaux trees. In my opinion, it has a lot to do with the shape. And I've mentioned this in other videos, but, you know, Ron de Bordeaux, it really is round. Right? I think that's what Rond means, or maybe Rond is the location. No, Bordeaux is the location. So Rond in French means round, translates to round. It is a round fig, right? There are figs that do really well here, which are the ovoidal figs, which are shaped like ovals, or the pyriform figs, which are shaped like a teardrop, or maybe like a celeste is a good example. So this one's round and anything that's round or flat doesn't do well with splitting. I've noticed that pretty much across the board. So another fig that really um, is highly, highly regarded as a very early variety um, that does really well. And actually as Paulo Bologna has publicly said that if he could choose one variety out of his 700 figs, if he could choose one, which would it be? And he says, the Pastelier. And the Pastelier 
again, is an extremely widely grown fig that ripens basically the same time as Ronde de Bordeaux, but it's also round. Um, it's also hardy, by the way. It's probably hardier than Ronde de Bordeaux. Um, it's probably just as productive. The issue with, uh, with Pastelier is that one, it can split like Ronde de Bordeaux because of the shape. And also some of the strains of Pastelier may drop and you really have to wait for it to mature or find a good strain of Pastelier. I've actually dedicated a lot of land. Um, I'm growing about four or five different strains of Pastelier to find one that is better than the rest in terms of its splitting, um, in terms of its dropping, et cetera, et cetera. But it is, a, it is another standard. If somebody told me, Ross, you know, my favorite very, very early variety is Pastelier or Ronde Bordeaux, I wouldn't argue. It's, it's a good choice. But again, there's gotta be something better, right? Well, I think I found something better. I mean, I didn't, I didn't find it myself, but I have a number of figs out here, guys, that I planted of this variety. It's called uh, Campanier, Campaneri. Here's one actually right here. Uh, we have uh, one back there. It's actually gotten some nice size to it. Um, I have, uh, a couple on the front to test its hardiness. I have really them all over the damn place. And I'll tell you why. Um, first off, it's a fig that comes from France as well, right outside of Paris, um, in probably one of the suburbs. And it has survived there in a polar vortex year, um, negative four degrees Fahrenheit. And this has been uh, documented by Thierry in France, uh, which is where this, uh, this variety originates and has made its way into, into the United States. Um, really, it's more recent. It's pretty new to a lot of people. I would like to think I have one of the older trees in the US. I'm not entirely sure, but um, certainly I have at least something to show um, in terms of a hobbyist <laughs> that are growing these, these varieties here. Um, and believe it or not, um, you know, negative four is quite incredible, but that's not really why I'm so high on this variety. First off, it does ripen really around the same time as Ronde de Bordeaux, um, as Pastelier. It's in the same category in terms of when it ripens. Um, but it doesn't split. Um, it seems quite vigorous. It seems quite productive. I like the tree. It seems quite resilient and hardy. Um, all the characteristics I guess you would look for, but it also has the rain resistance, the split resistance, that the round Pastelier, the round Ronde Bordeaux do not have. And I really highly respect this fig for that reason. I don't know why it doesn't split, but it has extreme drying capabilities as well. I'm going to show you guys some that I have actually harvested today. Um, I had one that was perfect, as perfect as I've ever gotten one, and it blew me away. And I didn't unfortunately get it on video. But I also have here a Ronde de Bordeaux that's pretty much perfect as well, as you guys can see. So here's Ronde de Bordeaux. It is quite round, is it not? Almost flat. Really struggling here with the camera. Ay, ay, ay. Come on. Doesn't want to cooperate here, guys. Don't have enough hands for this. There we go. All right, so Ronde de Bordeaux here is on the right. And you can see almost how flat it is. 
it is quite round. It has split down there at the eye. But what's amazing about it, you know, because even though it does split, it doesn't spoil, which is really insane to think about. Here's one here that I also harvested today. It's split wide open. And uh, unfortunately, it's so far away from ripe but I decided to pick it because there's no way this thing's not gonna spoil, right? But somehow, Ronde Bordeaux doesn't spoil. So I guess it has that going for it, even though it does split. I don't know if I could say the same about Pastillier. Here's the Campanieri. This is more of an elongated shape to it, but most of them I see are quite round as well. So it's kind of strange why this one doesn't split and the others do that have a similar shape. Maybe it's in the uh, length of the stem. But Pastelier also has a pretty decently long stem. Um, anyway, it just has a really great ability to dry. They're very tasty. In fact, I've compared them. This uh, perfectly ripened Ronde Bordeaux. At this point, it's basically fig candy. I've compared them side by side to the Campaneri. I'll do it again for you guys. Very good. Sweet, fruity. Oh, it's like eating fig candy. It really is. And then you've got the Campanieri here. Now, these here are very syrupy. Very good. Not as much berry. Sweeter. Um, good figure flavor. And what I've noticed is that um, most of them, if you get them to this dried state that they will get to, like that Ronde Bordeaux I just ate, was kind of at that semi-dried state. It's so weird that, you know, sometimes they, they'll dry up, but... Uh, it's not technically a dried fig. You know, it's a weird state that they get to. And the same thing with this Campanieri. This one will actually legitimately dry though. So, you know, it will get those cork tints. It will actually turn into a dried fig product. Um, and for me, that I think really puts it above the other two varieties. You know, the fact that it doesn't split, it rarely cracks, it uh, handles rain like a champ, doesn't spoil the ants love it but uh yeah it's just really it really is incredible so i want to thank you guys here for watching this one i mean this is really my top tier fig here in terms of the earliest ripening figs you know you could also ross someone's gonna ask what about hardy chicago ross well hardy chicago usually ripens about a week or two after these all the figs i mentioned so you can't necessarily, I think, put that fig in the same class. And I still do value the Hardy Chicago's for that reason. But, you know, a week or two difference can be quite uh, significant. If I could have all my figs ripen a week or two earlier, I certainly would love it. Um, it would make a huge difference. So, um, yeah, um, this is my favorite. We'll see if anything comes out of this trial that we've done, because there's other figs here, guys, that should ripen around the same time and could be uh, just as good, if not better, than the Campanieri. Um, and I think a lot of you guys should give this one a shot. Really happy to be able to spread this one around this cutting season, because that's uh, you know kind of a big goal of mine, is to get the right varieties into people's hands. So we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care. Hit that subscribe button for me. We will see everybody in the next one, all right? What is your favorite early variety? Uh, assuming it ripens as early as Ronde Bordeaux and, or Pastelier, right? All right, guys. Peace.